What about that landing? What about that flying? Who's flying? We're going to talk about that. Hi, I'm Glenda Omaña, global journalist, and I'm so excited to have this interview today on a topic that it's in my family. It's about flying. And we're here in Seattle talking with Peruvian pilot Larry Larabu Muro and his baby, one of the babies. Yes. Hey, Larry, I know all your followers are so excited to listen to your story, a lot of things that you don't know. But tell us first about your baby here, one of your babies. Well, this is a Cessna 170, 1953. It has lots of modifications to fly in a back country, starting for the big tires. These are amazing for landing and like on gravel bars and big rocks and off airport. The propeller is composite, empty. Uh, the engine is uh, 180 horsepower, so it's a modification. And we have stall kit and VGs that allows the airplane to fly slower. And you have lots of uh, control at very lo low speeds. Also have an alpha system, angle of attack indicator, that is much better than the airspeed indicator or the stall warning, much more accurate. Well, Larry, um, and this is very important, we're going to tell your story, how you started in something that is very different. You started being a pilot in Costa Rica, right? Yes. And uh, you decided that you wanted to be a pilot specializing in short fields and mountain flight. Yes. Why? Since the beginning, when I started to fly, that was my interest. I come from motorcycle racing, off-road. I like the outdoors, so I like the challenge. I like the adrenaline, and it's challenging. You have to practice a lot, learn a lot, learn to feel the airplane. And that kind of flying, since I was starting to learn, was what I wanted to do. How many years now? 14. 14 years. Yes. Now, uh, when you started, you tried to get lessons about it, and it was hard. Like in Costa Rica, you couldn't, right? Yes, there was no specialized instructor for that kind of flying. So what I did, I put the modification in my Cessna 182, same as these modifications, except for the tires. And I started to practice on my own, read a lot of books, and I started to post videos on YouTube. That was 14 years ago. Uh, to ask. To ask in aviation forums and backcountrypilot.org. There's lots of very experienced pilots and they were very helpful. They will give me all kinds of They tips. guided you. They did. And I continue flying, practice, practice, practice. I come from motorcycle racing professionally, so I'm used to practice and try to perfect things. So that's how I learned. Okay, we're going to stop here about the flying, uh, flying, and I know you have a lot of uh, questions too because they send questions, but this, you have referred twice in this conversation about uh, motorcycle. But yes. what you haven't tell No, they didn't like Tell us it. what happened. Well, I wanted a motorcycle since I was five years old, but my family, they say, no, we don't buy motorcycles in this family. So when I was 21, I sold my car and bought my bike. I remember the first three weeks I rode free every day. And um, when I bought my bike, I didn't know how to ride. So my friend went with me and he took it to his house. And then the next day I went to his house and then went riding, and riding off-road the first day. So that's how I started to ride, and then I started to do races um, in South America, Central America, in Europe, um, in the USA, both coasts, and Hawaii. How was that? It was amazing. I mean, I would say Peru is very different. It's desert, mm -hmm. huge sand dunes, mm -hmm. and then Costa Rica's jungle. The West Coast is... Uh, Forest, Hawaii is mud with clay, Europe is rocky and forest. It's, everything is different. Uh, mm -hmm. It was a great experience. So you're, um, for those of you that don't know, most of you know, we're talking to a personality here, right? A big personality 
uh, concerning bikes, motorcycles? Well, I, I dedicated a lot of years to that, yeah. Mm -hmm. What made you change? Oh, uh, I had an injury in my mm -hmm. knee. A car hit me on my way to the trails. And then I could not ride anymore. But during all my racing career, I was always building airplane models, going to air shows, to museums. So I was a pilot. You, you were ready to, for, the ready. Next, for the yes, next step. Yes, exactly. So when I stopped uh, riding, I started to fly. And I had the discipline of training from racing. Mm -hmm. So I adapted that discipline into aviation. So I practiced and practiced and practiced. I bet you have so many stories uh, flying in different places. Why um, short field? Why in the mountains? Why the rivers? Why? Why is that your favorite? I like remote places. I mm -hmm. like nature. Um, I like the challenge. You have to be very precise. You have to know your airplane. So it gives you a uh, satisfaction when you can do this kind of flying. Uh, it's a challenge. You train for it and then you do it. It's very risky. Uh, flying is risky anyway, and it's a lot of training. If you know what you're doing and you train for it, it's not risky because you have to have your limits, you know, your minimums. And mm -hmm. I won't land when it's super windy on a very short field because you're coming too slow and the wind can get you, a gust will get you, your airplane down. So you have to have your minimums and respect them and train a lot. Train a lot. And uh, when you train, you also record. You have all these uh, yes. incredible videos that we're watching right now and that you have through your um, YouTube channel. And uh, tell us about how you combine that now. Well, um, I have the GoPros I put in the wing, inside the cockpit. I have a 4K camera that usually I take some friend along and I, I land on a gravel bar on a short field. I, he get off and he films. Mm -hmm. I have uh, two friends that are very good drone pilots. Uh, they're really amazing. So they do great shots. So that's part of my hobby. I also like that. I enjoy mm -hmm. that. I bet you have a lot of stories. Can you share us some of yes, them? Yes. Like some in, things that have happened? <laughs> yes, like in Costa Rica one time I went to an air strip in the Indian community of Amubri, this is the border with Panama. And when I went there and I saw the runway, it looked like a, just a field with two tracks and I'm kind of bumpy and weird. So I did some low passes and I landed, bounced, landed. And then the community is Indian in that place. It looks like being in another country. And one of the guys came and said, you are the first airplane to land here in 15 years. The one before me was a missionary pilot, a German pilot, who used to fly there for mission. But he got very old, he stopped flying, and nobody else landed there. And the runway, I mean, the airstrip is very challenging. So I think it's why nobody lands there. But the place is amazing. So that's kind of... Uh, a combination. Uh, yeah. Also, I started to go to that place more and for Christmas I will ask my friends to get some toys and we fill up the airplane with toys and go there and give the toys to the... And they expect it, you to come. Yeah, oh yeah, they love me when I come with the toys, you know. <laughs> that was amazing. When you moved to Seattle, uh, you were started flying in Costa Rica and when you moved to Seattle, uh, you changed uh, the way you fly because you have uh, in a way more opportunities here yes um, because they let you land in yes. rivers and yes. land in short fields yes. how's that had been mm -hmm. that's been amazing it was my dream to do that um, we are not allowed to do that in Costa Rica how do you feel doing it of lots of freedom for starters um, it's a challenge uh, and you have to before landing you have to check the surface of the gravel bar for holes or big logs or something like that. And it's uh, challenging, a lot of fun. Also, I flew in Idaho, which is, was like a dream for me when I lived in Costa Rica. I always look at Idaho like it's an, an amazing place for flying. So mm -hmm. I did like three trips to Idaho in the Cessna 182, and that was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And also flown in Oregon, which has some very nice backcountry strips. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You also get a lot of uh, people asking questions because they want to do the same, right? Yes. What kind of questions uh, you, you've been asked and well, maybe we can comment some of Many okay. are about uh, modifications to the airplane. How does this propeller work for you? And is this uh, durable, will last long? Or how is the stall kit work for you? I have a Cessna 172 or 180, or I want to modify it to fly in the back country. Uh, and sometimes techniques, hey, do you think uh, I can do this airstrip in a 172? And most of the time it's about a pilot training. More. Where to train and how to train. Yes, and there's lots of specialized flight mm -hmm. schools in the U.S. About it. About mm -hmm. it, yes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I try to help as much as possible. I reply to every single email or phone call or message. Mm -hmm. And what's your advice to all of them? Go training, have fun. Go training. Um, keep training. Training yeah. means exactly what? What well, is the process of training? In my case, for short fields, you go fly slow speeds. And it's called slow flight. Uh, you do stall so you know when the airplane is going to stop flying, so you, you get a feeling for the airplane. Uh, practice a spot landing, try to land where you want to put the tires, that's where you land, that's very important. Come at the right speed, so it's about precision mostly. Uh -huh. Your favorite video of all the, what you have done in, in, in these many years? Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> That's a good question. You have to check all of them to see. <laughs> I, I have some very good ones with uh, drones. There is one of my friends, Zach. He's a very good drone pilot. He filmed my friend, Jughead, flying that drone backwards. And he's fly Jughead is flying a 170. And he's very close to the airplane all the way to the landing. That was an amazing shot. Uh, that's one of my favorite videos for sure because the flying on the drone pilot were as good or even better than our flying, so that was amazing. Anything else you want to add? Well, uh, thank you for the interview, and this is something I enjoy. I hope you guys keep flying, enjoying, keep training. Great. I just want to say I'm very happy to meet you, and um, I, I de want to dedicate with my heart this interview to especially me, my father-in-law, who he was a pioneer pilot in Costa Rica. His name, uh, they call him Muñeco Araya, Fernando Araya. And very all, famous. Very famous, yeah. <laughs> and uh, maybe he's smiling in heaven <laughs> looking at this interview. But, you know, his, the family and sons and grandchildren that uh, also love flying. So congratulations. Thank congratulations. You. And maybe we can fly now, right? Yes. Bye-bye. <laughs>